Hey everyone, it's me, your girlfriend, Dream. Live here on Wednesday, October the 22nd, 2014. Miss Atlanta Thick Dream from MissAtlantaThickDream.com and the world beyond. It is I, the Yummy Mommy Dream. I'm coming to you on this Wednesday with, man, let's see, a couple different topics. Hmm. And I hope you like my army, my army, my army scully, my army scully. Um, thank you guys for the love on my um, Facebook, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And of course on my Twitter and my YouTube, ATL Thick Dream. Alright, look, and I don't know where I'm posting is it. I just got in from the gym, home alone. On a Wednesday evening, what? <laughs> look, my cousin was like, "You look like you part of uh, SWV." So I said, "You know what? That was my air, right?" Excuse me. I don't know what I'm going to talk about today. I'm trying to figure this out. I think I'm going to talk about as a mom raising daughters and in a home where the father is absent, right? daughters and then uh, you know I have a son okay this is what I want you guys to know when I get where I'm truly truly destined to be I'm gonna be in a better position to open up a foundation a nonprofit or whatever um, maybe I can be a li liaison or something between couples who have children and they've separated whatever the case may be because here's the thing and I'm trying to get comfortable <sighs> you know, and I work out my, my, my aceritis is kicking in on the booty. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> um, because I don't know why the brothers, and I said brothers, think it's okay to go about their lives and pretend like their babies, their offsprings that they've created don't exist. And I don't get that for the life of me because something that I created whether it's a BM or a whatever, anything, a garden, I take care of it, okay? I don't just crap out something or give birth to something, whatever it is, any type of thing, bodily function, whatever it is, I nurture it, I take care of it. I don't just let it sit there and let somebody else take care of it like it's trash, like it was a diseased portion of my body, and I don't care about it. And see, that's my passion, too. I know I talk about the comedy and the singing and the blogging or whatever. That is my, my passion, too. And what I would like to do is make it known that it is not okay for you to take care of somebody else's kids and not taking care of your own. It is not okay for you to feel some type of weight towards your ex-wife, baby mama, former girlfriend, whomever she is, whom you stuck your dick up in, raw might I add, or the condom broke, whatever the case may be, who knows, you had one little romp or two with her, cut buddy, then you had a baby, whatever the situation was, you and her had sex, you have a baby together, or children together, and you got in your feelings, you decided that you didn't want to be involved with her for whatever reason, okay? It's not okay, and I know that in on this, this this magnificent planet, there's a place where dads cannot get away with what they do here in the United States. I think that men who don't take care of their own sea should be castrated or stoned, whatever, beheaded. If, I mean, whatever the electric chair, something inhumane, my ass. Okay, inhumane. I don't care. It's inhumane not to take care of your babies. And you guys know I have babies, not just one or two. I have babies, okay? And I take care of my babies no matter what I do, how I do it. I do it legally, whether you think it's immoral, whatever, whatever. I take care of mine. And how I do mine, it doesn't matter. I take care of mine. And it is a sickness, an epidemic, and these men and some ratchet women you think it's okay to walk around here and take care of other people's kids and not see your kids on a weekend. You send a little bit of money in child support and you refuse to get another job to take care of you and yours. 
And then you got some who so caught up in self that they can't even see straight because it's all when they look in the mirror, all they see is me, 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 me. They don't see, oh my God, I gotta take care of my kid. Oh my God, my kid could be without shoes. Oh my God, my kid could be without a coat this winter. Okay? Or who knows, you know, baby mama living in an extended stay. I can't help her because I got my car payment on my bins or my law firm or or my, my practice needs the rent paid there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is. You know, y'all dudes are just, y'all make me sick and it hurts me and it hurts my soul. I'm nurturing other daughters that are not mine. I don't do it, you know, full time. But I like to advocate to grown women who, and I say young grown women, not grown grown women, who were raised without the father because I was too. Or your daddy was off in the war. Or your daddy was off doing him with another itch because he wasn't with your mama for whatever reason. He off with another heifer raising her kids and not taking care of you. So you feeling some kind of way towards your daddy even though he there. You see him every now and then. You know, I mean, this stuff like that, that, that kind of hurts me. And I, it hits home because I deal with it every day. Okay? I deal with it every day. And me being a woman who grew up without her dad, you know, because my dad... He, he had an illness very... He had got stricken with a stroke early on, okay? So, I didn't yearn for daddy. I yearned for mommy, okay? I didn't yearn for daddy. And the thing is, I'm kind of sort of daddy girl, but not really, you know, because my dad is disabled and in the conversations, I can't really talk to him like some women can or young ladies can just call their dads up and have a, a conversation like that or, or your dad will meet you for lunch down or brunch at the IHOP, whatever the thing is, you know. You can do that. And I think that with my foundation or my nonprofit program, I would like to nurture the women, the young ladies. And I say from the puberty stage on up to maybe the young 20s. You know, raising them to be women who are not carrying a lot of weight. Women who learn how to nurture themselves and, and, and see a sense of community to give give back and know themselves and to grow within. That way they're not yearning for certain things. And they're not posted up talking about how a man is no good because he's this, this, and that. And basically, pretty much because what did Austin Powers say? Daddy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. Okay. And she's crying out. And these brothers don't see it because they too busy into their careers, meaning their money, you know, and chasing bitches instead of thinking about your kids. Don't make no sense. And to put this all in reverse, because my brother, the father, the single parent that he is, yeah, he got, you know, himself caught up with, with, a, with a ratchet baby mama. Okay, so he's raising my nephew solo, and it's just crazy. And he was in a situation to where he had to pay child support on a on a son that him I was raising a little bit. He was raising now him and my mom they're co parenting raising him together. So it goes both ways. And then with the baby with his baby mom, God, look ugh, Lee, okay. So, fellas, I know what you go through dealing with, you know, single parenting, too. But it, it, some get it just as bad. Because when I was down at the uh, child support office, my damn self, last week, a guy said that um, his baby mom, he was going to do a skip trace and all kind of stuff on her. Because one of the kids that he had with her that are grown worked at a collection agency and she hasn't paid a dime. And one is um, going to Harvard, and that's because him and his parents are paying for it, blah, blah, blah. See how we make it do what it do? And see, because who I am on this internet thing, I have baby daddy, ex-husband looking at me. And they see what I'm doing to provide for my kids. And they think that it's okay to stand back in the shadows and not do as much as they could, which is dumb, diddy, dumb, 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 nigga. Okay, because you know this face, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. But what is going somewhere is the kids are growing. 
they are maturing and they see certain things. They know the struggle. The struggle is real for real. Okay? All day, every day. And, you know, my brother was like a woman like you, da 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 You know, you should be able to go to school, do what you need to do, and they supposed to be taking care of their kids. That's right. Uh-huh. You supposed to be taking care of your kids. And, you know, one minute I'm a good mom, blah, 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 blah. Next minute I'm this, I'm that. You know, all kind of hoes. Yeah, okay, whatever. Fuck you and whatever you got going on in your spirit, in your energy. I'm not trying to feel that. All I need to hear is where to check it, when you come to see your kid, okay? Are you helping with this? I don't give a damn what you're doing, who you're sleeping with. And see, that's the thing. Some of you guys are too busy worrying about the wrong damn things. It doesn't matter what she's doing, okay? Whether she's stripping down the strokers on a weekend and, or she's working at Waffle House during the week. It doesn't matter. Long as that baby got shoes on her feet, okay? And her hair is combed and food in her belly. It doesn't matter, okay? And that baby is not being abused. That baby is not being molested by anyone, you know, by the mom or by any of her boyfriends or whatever who she has around your kid. If you want that child in your life, how about you be in that child's life? And it's not all about a paycheck. Because I know some brothers that don't even work. And they take damn good care of their kids. And shout out to you. Alright? No excuses. None. Absolutely none. And see, with my foundation, which I would I would have to structure it and just sit down and, and just put it down. I wrote down some things in a notebook. How I want my different little programs and stuff. How I want them to um, to be set up. But being a li- liaison or having like a firm where, you know, you're, you're in between the two. Because I don't see no freaking reason why a man should not want to be a part of their son or their daughter's lives. And then you got them here on Facebook. You get them here on Instagram. Then be the one calling the girls the... uh the thoughts and the hoes and this, that, and the other, whatever. And them be the girls that are out there doing X, Y, Z because they miss their father or they being raised by a stepfather that they can't stand, okay? Whatever reason, the child is acting out. And then that child becomes a resentful adult, okay? A resentful adult or an asshole or a bitch or just a ratchet-ass female, Okay, or a bitter woman. You never know what seed you are planting in that child by not being there, is what I'm saying. By not being in that child's life. You cannot be upset with what that child is going to become if you are not in that child's life playing an active role. You feel me? Okay. So you can't complain. And it's not about seeking custody. It's not about plucking a child out of the, the natural environment that sh- that they've already or she or he has already, you know, established without your ass all these years. And you want to pluck and uproot that child from what they know. You think you're doing the best by doing that? Because your ass don't want to pay child support and you'd rather just get custody. So your, your old bitter girlfriend or whatever bougie girlfriend can watch your kid. Negative, negative, negative. A lot of you guys have made that mistake. And a lot of these women who don't have children are not going to nurture your child the same way as the mom, okay? Don't even do it. I wouldn't bring a man all up in here and have them nurture my son or daughter if they're not taking care of their own children or if they don't have children. Or if I have not built some type of rapport between my children and my mate. Because, see, I'm working on my kids. That's why you don't see nobody up in here with me. I'm working on my roots and my foundation. Okay? So, why everybody wondering why I don't have a live-in situation? And why I don't let certain things happen? That's why. If you want to know the real, for real, for real, for real, for real. Okay? And men who take care of their homes... Whether they're doing alimony or whether they're paying bills at another female's house... And they living with mama, can't live up in here and dealing with all this. Because it's like dealing with a married man. Okay? So why would I do that? What can you possibly contribute to my tribe? Okay? My well-being. If you taking care of your exes, 
you know, bills and your kids. How can you do that for me? How can you help me out and and want to live with me? Mm -hmm. Now I play I played that card before allowed someone to live with me, and he wasn't really taking care of his kids. And you know what he would do? He would go outside my house to call his kids and his baby mama because he didn't want them to know that he was in a, a living situation with me and mine. You know what? I feel so bad for those kids. I feel so bad for him because he he was being ignorant. And the thing is, my kids love this dude. He used to cook. He used to be there, but he really didn't, you know, have the full time job or whatever. He knew how to nurture, but it's just that he wasn't able to do it, you know, because of poor choices he made coming up. In his ego, remember I said, get your penis out of the way because his penis was in a whole lot of stuff. And his ego, yeah, got him in trouble. So I'm sure he don't see his kids like he need to. And that's a, where a lot of brothers fuck up. Your penis get in the way. And then you can't even see your damn kids. That, that's what I'm talking about. I need to do some type of life success course regarding men and their egos and them letting go the hurt. We women, we deal with the hurt all day, every day. That's just part of our emotional process. But y'all men, y'all need to deal with the hurt and hear it from a woman's perspective and see them from beginning, meaning toddler stage, puberty, or the tween stage. Okay, because you know your little girls are starting their periods at 10 and 11, my ninja. Okay, you need to see them grow up. And we need to follow someone's child that is not, is without a father, okay? We need to follow them from being a toddler on up and see where they go. In my program or dealing with, you know, whatever, how I, I help out or or not in the program. Just follow somebody's child. Let them be, uh, and I hate to say test dummy, but use them as a, a, a specimen in this project, in this project. And let you see the difference of someone that is being nurtured, being mentored, and being guided through community versus one kid that is just left out with one parent in the home and no communication with that father. We need to try that. And my challenge to you this cuffing season, and I say cuffing season, think about it. Why you over there laid up all booed up? When was the last time you seen your kids? Or when was the last time you spent time with your kids? When was the last time you actually let yourself go and said thank you to your ex-wife, baby mama, you know, for raising your kids, doing a beautiful job of raising your kids with what resources she had? Or ladies, when was the last time in my spooky dryer? <laughs> When was the last time you called up your baby father or your kids that you don't barely see because you all doing your career or whatever, don't take care of your kids? When was the last time you communicated with them and say, mama still loves you. Mama needs to be there more for you. And I promise, even if it's just there reading a story, walking up and down the grocery aisle, reading the ingredients of a box of cereal with them. Looking at the calories, looking at certain things, sitting down at lunch with them at school. Those little simple things, our kids need. Our kids do need it still, okay? Video games ain't going to make them future leaders, okay? Mm -mm. And neither is the music and the entertainment industry because it's like winning an effing lottery, getting in. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's like winning a lottery. We have to be our kids' heroes. We do. Whatever you choose to do, whatever your passion is, whatever your light tells you to do in here, we have to be our kids' heroes. No matter if that child is 2 or 22, your job does not start. Your job does not end, okay? Your job does not, and I say start because I'm thinking of, of something else. Your job does not end when that child reaches 21. And some of you daddies think that. You still have to nurture that child from the womb to the tomb. I know y'all heard that before. From the womb to the tomb. I know I'm nurturing mine from the womb to the tomb. I have one that doesn't even live here right now. On and off, in and out, coming and going, whatever. Y'all know the situation. You follow me on Twitter. But I love her to death. 
I love her to death. And you know what? When I reach my status, my my ultimate success in my fan, my financial status where I plan to be, oh, I'm going to pull her in. And y'all going to get a chance to either meet her or hear some testimonials from her. And she can tell you from her end and tell you what it's like being the daughter of Miss Atlanta Thick Dream. When she become at a certain, y'all get this, y'all gonna, y'all not, uh-uh, I promise you that. Y'all not gonna, um, not see our face, my face, I say our face, you're gonna see her face too. And it won't be in any type of sexist or derogatory way. Even if you just hear her voice and hear her side of the story, what it's like being the daughter of Miss Atlanta Thick Dream. All right? So, you won't be seeing me always in the, you know, the adult world as I go on and, and progress in another realm, and I'm not saying I'm totally committed to quitting, you know, but if it, hey, one day it may happen, you never know, it's just boom, I'm going to be going in this direction, where I can advocate, and I can motivate, and I can educate some people, because there's a lot of education that needs to be done out here, I don't know everything, but I'm willing to share a whole lot of knowledge, and I'm willing to motivate some people, to do the job that they need to do, because damn it, there was days I didn't want to get out this bed, but guess what? That something in me told me, Gravy, to get your ass out of bed and get them kids off to school every single day. And I thank God and I thank the universe for allowing me to have this opportunity to come to you. And um, I'm going to wrap it up on this wonderful Wow Wednesday. Be all you can be. <laughs> and you don't have to be in the army. You know what I'm saying? Because we at war every day with ourselves. And like I said to my homegirl, I'm saving myself from myself. We have to save ourselves from ourselves. Save ourselves from ourselves. We do. Every day. <laughs> Every hour. Whatever. But I'm going to go sign off. I'm at 21 minutes. And this has been Miss Atlanta Thick Dream on October the 22nd. Post-workout. MissAtlantaThickDream.com. Bye.